Shalom, Chavarim, shalom. Why the Middle East is fake. The Middle East is a fake terminology. And a lot of people, when they talk about the ancient past, you hear people say, oh, um, Jesus Christ was Middle Eastern. You've heard that before. The one they call Jesus Christ, like what, 2,000 years ago, right? About 2,000 approximately years ago. Adonai no Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, who the world calls Jesus Christ. They'll say he was Middle Eastern. They'll say, oh, the ancient Egyptians, they were Middle Eastern. But wait, hold up. The term Middle East is fake. It's fake. It's anachronistic. Anachronistic It's like out of proper time. It's like out of time. It's like saying that um, George Washington, when he was hungry, he went to McDonald's, Mickey D's. He went to Mickey D's. He picked up, um, you know, a Big Mac and some fries and he shared it with Thomas Jefferson, you know, and Pokemon. You know what I'm saying? It's just a nonsense terminology right there. Middle East is fake. Yes, it's, it's a real place, but that was actually part of Africa, right? Afro Asia. Right? Some might even refer to it as Ethio-Asia, Afro-Asia. As we know, the African um, continent, the landmass, extends into what is now called Middle East. But this whole terminology of Middle East is actually a fake terminology. It's a political terminology. It's a terminology in the times of the Gentiles. I know that's a little biblical right there, but there's a terminology, the times of the Gentiles. It, it connects with what is referred to even in Revelation as the end times, the times of the the Gentiles of the nation states, other than Israel, and particularly the Greco Romans, and those particular nations that then come to like Western Europe, and then we get the Anglo American, white Anglo Saxon Protestant, the Americas, and the British, and we go all the way up to World War II. And this is where the term Middle East was, was coined. The term Middle East was a coined terminology. It was actually coined before World War II. This terminology, Middle East, was not used. It, it did not become popularized. It was not a. It was a term that the British. It really comes from the British, and here's what we're going to break down right here. First of all, this whole term Middle East. So when they try to tell you, well, ancient Egypt, look what they do right here. Now I have to hear ones like the Sonnetas and well, actually Jabbar. It's actually. Brother Reggie, also Jabari, right? But Sanetta as well, because I heard they have a petition to remove Zahi Hawass. Zahi Hawass also got a kind of update to share with you because actually there was a, a tour, I think a tour that was canceled, right? They're becoming very anti Afri anti African, generally speaking, but black especially when we talk about ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt heritage. But there is a petition we had advised, um, you know, we had recommended that. And then we picked up ones, a few ones that amongst us in the LOJ, the Chabarim, told us that, yeah, they, you know, Brother Reggie's taking our advice. I don't know whether Brother Reggie was taking our advice. You know, Rastafari Jews sometimes tune in to Brother Reggie when he's on the side of the platform, like some of his presentations, you know. There was one on Coptic. I think there was also another follow-up one that was very good, also on Cleopatra and uh, Jada Pinkett. I don't know if you know about that. Now, this is all connected. Right, this is all connected. Just to give, let's give you a highlight right here. Let's see if we can give this highlight right here. Let's go like this. Oh, there it was. There it goes. It was actually right there. Let's see if we can bring back our windows right there. This is it. Let's see if we can get to the other window. Might not have the window here. Okay, let's do this right here, brothers and sisters. This was going to be our kind of follow-up. Right, we're gonna to touch on a touch on a little follow up right here. Is this right here? Let's open. Let's see if we can open this link right here. Right, Egypt has expelled a Dutch museum's team of archaeologists from Saqqara in revenge. Get it? It's archaeology in revenge over a controversial Afrocentric exhibit. This is why you have to know that this whole term Middle East. It's fake.
and we'll give you the evidence, give you the documentation, the resources so you can know. You know, when they say source up or shut up, I want to give you the information so you can know this for yourself because this is disinfo. It's fake, fake information, pseudo, right? It's disinfo that's been put out there too long. This term Middle East does not go before World War II. And we're going to bring, bring out some more evidence on it. But this one right here is just very interesting, like to get into the Egyptian authorities. Martin, right? The descendants of the invaders, basically, right? The invaders, the descendants of invaders, Ottoman Turks. Before that, we had, you know, the um, Romans and before that, the Greeks, you know, like Zawi Hawass. He, he's from that particular heritage, the Ottoman Turks on one hand, or either descendants of like the, the, the Greco-Romans. But Egyptian, modern Egyptian authorities have accused the show that's put on by this Dutch uh, museum team. Now, we read in the article, they've been excavating in, in, in modern Egypt, but from looking for ancient Egyptian artifacts, art and facts, since 1975. And they were expelled because of a claim by the so-called Egyptian authorities in the connection with Za Zahi Hawass. If we can get that, we'll definitely share that on our platforms as well. There's a petition to, um, I guess, um, take his degree Right, for his degree, I think there's a technical way of saying it, either recalling his degree, speaking about Dr. Zahi Hawass. You've probably seen him on a lot of the, you know, Egyptian history channel, other kind of popular shows on, you know, TV and cable. You know, Zahi Hawass. You know, he's always the guy speaking kind of bad English and he's always trying to deny right the black african black people in africa's role right in the establishment of ancient egypt basically trying to we, we would call it whitewash he's not really white but they consider egypt no this is also why egypt is considered according to the modern politics politics as a white country a couple of years mm, about maybe two Almost two decades when I first came across it, I say a couple of years, almost two decades ago um, or more, there was a black man. He's from Aswan, a black man. He's an Egyptian, but he recognized as Egyptian. He's an African. He's a black man. And I think he was traveling either to America or elsewhere. And he had noticed on his passport right, that he was considered white because Egypt, right, modern Egypt, in, in the fictitious Middle East political region. Now, it's very important that they call this region the Middle East, right, and broke off politically Egypt, right, as well as Arabia and the Levant from Africa. This is why, as a little footnote, many ones don't know, but many others do know that the Mard in 740 A.D., you know, European um, Khazarian Jews in particular, after like the World War II and the Holocaust, they were looking right around those times to settle in Wakanda. Oh, let me say it the way you know it. Uganda. They were looking to settle actually uh, either state of Israel or Judea or something within the Horn of Africa. But then decided based on the whole Rothschilds and and this, um, what, what's, what's this called again? The um, Balfour Decoration. Many of you know about the Balfour Decoration. But before that, the European Jews were seeking to establish a homeland where in East Africa, Uganda, or as some of y'all might know it, Wakanda. Look it up, look it up, look it up. So we're just showing you this right here because Egyptian authorities have accused this show, which explores the influences of ancient Egypt on black musicians. So what, is, what, what the whole show that they expel from Egypt was going to explore was the influences of ancient Egypt. Some might refer to it as Kemetic, Kemet and Kemetic, right? Or ancient Kemet, as many of our scholars and teachers and people would say, on black musicians, they're being accused 
of, quote, falsifying history, end quote. All right. So the falsifiers are accusing the truth seekers of falsifying history. All right. You remember this cover right here. They have this in this article right here. Nice. Right here, here, here. Now we're going to get into a little bit more of this right here, but just a kind of a FYI, FYI, y'all, FYI. You know, for your information. But how does this connect with the Middle East being fake? Because, see, you accept this terminology, Middle East. It's in the Middle East, in the Middle East. And Jesus was Middle Eastern and, and Tutankhamun and the ancient Egyptians, they were Middle Eastern. They were Middle Eastern people. Lie, 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 lie. Now, can we bring out the evidence that this is a lie, 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 lie? All right, so here we have this right here. Let's just open that link once again. Let's see if we can bring up our page that we were exploring. Let's take this out of the equation. There we go. Middle East right here. And let us, okay, so the Middle East. The Middle East is what they call a legal fiction. Similar to the continent being known as Ethiopia before and the South Atlantic Ocean being known as the Ethiopic Ocean. Right, they shall seek to change what times and laws. Right, times and laws. You can clearly see, even right here, you can clearly see how the proof that a that what they call Asia or Arabia is a part of Africa, Arabia is a part of Africa. That means that ancient Israel also is African. Look at this, not just ancient Egypt. It's obvious, right? You can see that red square right there. Look look how they make that square right there. They, they make a right angle right there and say that's a part of all of that. That's because of the history of invasions, right? The most recent major invasion was the Ottoman Turkish, the, the Mardin Hittite. Yes, that's right. We said Hittite, the modern Hittite or Ottoman Turkish Arab Islamic invasion is the most recent of the invasions. But the whole terminology of Middle East is fake and it was actually invented, right, and got popularized through World War II news reporters and World War II newsreels is what popularized this modern terminology. This pseudo, you know, this is a, this is one of the big pseudoisms here because you can see what it does with Egypt, right? And therefore, when you hear ones like Zahi Hawass and others, right, pseudo scholars say that, well, ancient Egypt would, would, had nothing to do with Africa and Africans and black Africans. And they, they would even say today, you know, in a lot of their um, frantic uh, social media you know, protesting, you know, this is what happened with uh, Kevin Hart, you know, um, we see Jada Pinkett, right, also with her Cleopatra, you can see right there with the Dutch Museum, we show you that right there where they canceled a show that was exploring the influence that ancient Egypt has on black musicians, and they, they say it's falsifying history. How's it falsifying history? You know, you go to a museum, you see a work of art, different people look at the same work of art, and people will interpret. Don't they interpret? They say, well, what it looks like to them, right? Just, just from that perspective and what it looks like to many black people and many people who have eyes to see is that the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, definitely were a African people. Even the ancient Egyptians testified to that. But that's not the point of this particular vlog right here, here, here. So Middle East geography is basically bullshit. It's political bullshit. It's political BS, right? And it's very, very harmful, very, very detrimental political BS too, right? As we can see even with these controversies concerning Egypt and ancient Egyptian. You know, anyone can see that studies history is that these people like Zahi Hawass and others, their ancestors or others invaded, came into this place well after, way after the ancient black Africans had established it. Oh, should we say the black Africans and the ancient Ethiopians, the Tobians had established it. But let's get to the 
facts right here the facts of the matter right here let's bring this up right here let's see if we can do this right here and let's see um okay let's actually what's that page we was on a page see when we open up this page sometime there we go right there let's scroll down to just where we were right before we open that page to show you the most recent attack all right the most recent there we go right there okay so we looked up mid middle east etymology you can see it right there middle east etymology mm -hmm. quote the middle east end quote the quote middle east end quote was originally coined coined you know what i mean coin like you mint currency you know like some currency that people use today never existed before but they mint it today and then maybe tomorrow they mint something new right so this is like fake currency right this is like fake currency it's like it's like bad money you know what I mean? That caused a lot of problems. You see all the problems, all the war and bloodshed and stealing and murder and lies and thieving that occurs in this particular region known as the Middle East. You wonder why? Hmm. Why does it seem like the Middle East nowadays is like the most important political region on the face of the earth? Hmm. Right? Well, first of all, let's find out where this term came from and why for us and truth seekers it is a false right it is a pseudo it's a fake terminology right it's a part of it's like revelate when revelations talk about the beast right you know this is the confusion this is babylon the confusion was originally coined in the late 19th century by the british now the late 19th century is the 1800s so the british coined this particular terminology so that means for 1800 years before to the so-called beginning of the times of the one they call Jesus Christ, therefore Jesus Christ could not be a Middle Eastern man because he was not waiting for 1800 years or 17 to 1800 years to go by for the British, the British to coin this terminology. Notice what it says right here along with other Eurocentric geographic terms. Boom. Now this is coming out, this is being referenced here to csme.indiana.edu. Just for the scholarship, the level of scholarship backup research right here. What and where is the Middle East? All right, so check this out, download that PDF, but just right here, the Middle East was originally coined in the late 18th century that means the late 1800s by the british along along plus that's a plus so we talk about how the southern atlantic ocean was known as the ethiopic ocean on the maps as this is the maps during the time of the pseudo the so-called transatlantic slave trade that's a false terminology it should be called the trans ethiopian ocean slave trade or trans-Ethiopic ocean slave trade. But that would, that would make things too obvious, right? That makes things too obvious, right? Especially the Bible readers, they will see, wait, are you not as the children of the Ethiopians? I mean, the children of Israel. So, so, so the Israelites are right. That's right. Along with other, note this, Middle East is a terminology coined, right, by the, the, the Babylon. <laughs> by Babylon, mother... You know, Britannia, the tin lady, you know, in prophecy, if you can, if you can see, if you can understand what Revelation is speaking of, you know, the role of great so-called Britain, Britannia, what is used to be referred to as the tin lady. Now, these many of these ancient places, even in Europe, was known even in the first century times of the Bible. That's a whole other video, a whole other presentation, a whole other research right there. Right. But Britain. Right, Britain, right, the British, this is what the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant also remember that the British ruled three-fourths of this earthly plane, according to history, right? And then Britain, right, the mother gave birth to a daughter, right? And here's where we get the Americas, right? Here's where we get the Americas, 
All right, so as we put all these pieces together, but this here is so very clear. Note what this says, along with other Eurocentric. So we see the pushback right, in that archaeology article right, concerning Egypt, right, Egypt banning, right, banning, let's just bring this up right here so we can show you this right here, or expelling, the more correct term is expelled, has expelled a Dutch, right, it's not a museum from the hood or somewhere like, but it's a Dutch, right, European, right, museum. So this doesn't mean that when we say Eurocentric that we're just saying that all Europeans, some Europeans know the truth and some Europeans are speaking the truth and some Europeans like the Dutch Museum team was allowing an opportunity right, for the truth to be explored, namely the influences of ancient Egypt on black museums. Seems like what's really going on is racism right, in archaeology or pseudo-archaeology racism, right, in politics, right, racism, right, in culture and heritage that must be redressed, right, when they speak about, quote, falsifying history. Well, we're just proving right here that the whole Middle East is a falsification. The terminology is a falsification of history, right, and also leads to a confusion, Right? So you hear people talk about, oh, Jesus was a Middle Eastern man. <laughs> well, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as Middle East. Right? Say the ancient Egyptians were Middle Eastern people. No such thing right? as Middle Eastern people. We showed you what they consider and what they call Middle East. Have you seen? Let's, let's bring that up again, Chabarin. Right? This particular area of the world, this particular region of the world. Right? Right? Note this right here. Know this, know this map right here. What, what, what is so strange about this? You see all the countries in the red? This all has to do with what the Ottoman Turkish did, right? And we have to say along with the British, right? First it was the Ottoman Turks, right? Then the British. But notice how Ethiopia, right? Somalia, Uganda, and Kenya are not inclusive in that. So they'll try to give you an impression of, well, you know, that part is not connected to the continent, that the artificial borders that you see on the maps, that these were a real thing in the past. They were not a real thing in the past. Like we say, that's why the Bible speaks about the times, right? The times of the Gentiles, right? Because they all are arguing over ancient black and ancient African and to extend this ancient African and ancient Shemitic, Afro-Shemitic history. This is what they're all arguing over, whether it's from the Egyptian, ancient Egyptians, Zahawi, Zahi Hawass, and, and others that are anti-Kevin Hart, anti-Jada Pinkett, right? anti Nas, Rihanna, any of the artists or any of you people that basically say, well, yeah, ancient Egypt, those are black people. No, no, they wasn't. They were Middle Eastern people. And these Middle Eastern people, right, did not even exist or did not even rule that land until their ancestors invaded it, right, in later times, in latter days and times. And then we get the British come along and you can see really what the real influence, how a lot of this has to do with um, religio politics, religion and politics in particular, religion and politics. And what's so very interesting is that even though the British fought against the Ottoman Turks, they both have gotten in bed together against the African, believe it or not. They both, it's, it's like my, 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 my enemies enemy, right, is my friend. It's that old saying, right, that my enemy's enemy is my friend, right? If you look at this, you'll think that that's actually the landmass there. You see what they have selectively cut out? You see what they have selectively cut out? And all of these regions, right, in ancient time, right, had black peoples in it, right? All these regions, this whole region is connected to Africa, 
That's why even the terminology Afro-Semitic, linguistically African-Semitic is there. Even though it seems today that the majority of these people, whether they are, you know, um, Semitic speakers, so forth and so on, majority of black people nowadays in the West are English speakers. Does that mean that our true roots go back to England? and not to Africa. We have no roots or heritage in Africa because we're speaking English today, right? Because some of our African peoples are speaking French. Does that mean that their origination, right? Their original emanation and origination is Europe or France. So we have to understand how conquest, conquering, you know, has a lot to do with it and understand the fake news, right? The fake news. All right, so when we hear the term Middle East, doesn't mean that real things are not happening over there, but that terminology of Middle East, right, is to have you just focus on this particular region, right, and forget that, first of all, Egypt is part of Africa, all right? See, see, Egypt is actually the anchor. Egypt, modern Egypt, right, with that Arabo, Arabo, Greco-Roman influence of today, is actually the, the the cornerstone of the politics that is happening in the rest of that particular area that is called and known as the Middle East, right? Called today as the Middle East, right? See how selectively it goes according to the political borders, right? And these political borders were drawn on the world map during the times biblically known as the times of the Gentiles or the times of the nation states, right? That would fight against God's people from that biblical, right? We could say from that biblical perspective. But here, the Middle East was originally coined in the late 19th century, which would be the 1800s by the British, along with other Eurocentric. Uh, they accuse the Dutch Museum and that show of being Afrocentric. The same thing they accuse Kevin Hart. Same thing they accuse Jada Pinkett of being Afrocentric. Same thing they accuse many of the comedics and many others of being Afrocentric. But now we get to the root of the matter, right? You know, the, 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 the reaction to the action, right? The Middle East, right, is actually a Eurocentric geographic term, such as another term they use, quote, Near East. Tell me, if there's a Near East, where is the Near West? Where is the Near West? Somebody tell me, where's the Near West? All right. Where's the near north? Can you show me on the map? Where's the near north? Where's the near south? So what's the near east? The near east is the eastern Mediterranean regions closest to Europe. Oh, so see, these are terminologies from a Eurocentric perspective, right? Terminologies that have gone on for for decades. Right, we could say maybe even more than a more than a century, right? More than a century that are based on the so-called European, the modern European, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant view of the world, and we can say white Anglo-Saxon Protestant because all that came out of Britannia, right? And Britain is responsible. And you'll find that this term Middle East was popularized and came into vogue because of the news reporters over usage of this terminology during World War II. Then there's also the term Far East, another Eurocentric term, Far East. What's the Far East? Right? So when we now start to spout these sort of terms, Right? We basically are consciously or unconsciously aligning with their mind and that the mindlessness right, of the system. Right? One could say of the matrix, so to speak, come out of her, my people. Far East, they say, would be China, Japan, Korea, and other East Asian entities much farther away from Europe. So all this is from a European perspective. 
right? A Gentile, right? Perspective, right? What and where is the Middle East? Let's scroll down right here. Middle East, right? Middle East, right? Where did the term Middle East come from, right? The term Middle East, this is Wikipedia. The Wikipedia page says, they say may have originated in the 1850s in the British India office, right? In the British India office. However, it became more widely known when American naval strategist Alfred Thayer Mahan used the term in 1902 to, quote, designate the area between Arabia and India. The area between what? Arabia. But now note this on today's maps, when you just look up Middle East and map, you'll notice that they will include Along with Arabia, the Levant in the north, and Arabia in the south, the Levant, you know, where the state of Israel is in the north, and um, Arabia in the south, they will include Egypt. But wait, 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 hold on for a moment. Egypt is on the African continent. Now you have a lot of goofy, modern, so called Egyptians, my right? descendants of invaders and squatters, that are saying that ancient Egypt is not African. Wait, 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 hold on for a moment. It's on the African continent, all right? Maybe they, they should say they are not African in their mentality, right? In their politics, in their psychology, in their culture, religion, what have you. But definitely ancient Egypt is African, right? If we are referring to the continent, right? And Arabia also is a part of Africa, Afro Arabia, Ethio Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Arabia. <laughs> Afro Arabia. It's all part of the same, the same landmass. We can get into that right there. But here, when the term, let's just take a snapshot of this because these are all important exhibits for later on, right? That they say it may have originated in the British India office. But it became more widely known when the American naval strategist Alfred Thayer Mahan used the term in 1902 to do what? To, quote, designate the area between Arabia. I'm emphasizing that right there, Arabia. When you look at a map, do you know what where Arabia is? Between Arabia and India, right? Between Arabia and India. But notice right here. And here, they don't include India right here. That's India right over there, right? That long part right there. That, that's India right there, right? But they include, notice what they, what they include right here? They include Egypt. But see, Egypt is not in Arabia, right? Egypt is not in Arabia, right? And so over here, what they did, if, it, if that is true, what we just read, they change it up again, right? To show that this is like a man-made, right? This is man-made political, you know, political, geopolitical, right? Um, terminology, right? To disclude, right? And in a sense to, um, to, to cut off Africa, right? This is another part of the times of coloni uh, colonization, Right, imperialism, European imperialism, and colonization right there. Because you'll notice today, it doesn't include India, but it said between Arabia and India. But today, when we look at it in a magnifying glass, it includes Egypt, where? In Africa. Right? See, Egypt is a part of Africa. So they say in 1902, it was to designate the, the the region between Arabia and India, but it no longer really designates India. Notice they don't they don't call India the Middle East. Perhaps it's because the Indian people themselves becoming conscious of this pseudo terminology rejected it, so they can no longer trick them. Right? But if we continue to utilize this term and don't check this term. Right then, it'll become harder to win back my right, that which they seek to take, and that's ancient Egypt. Right, that's ancient Egypt. They also put Ethiopia. Notice Ethiopia and Sudan. Part of there is also put in that same particular region. 
right? As though it's not a part of Africa. And as though, in truth, Arabia also is part of Africa, right? So the times of war, you know, wars and rumors of wars have a lot to do with these lies. It's these lies that cause these wars right there, right? Well, let's go into this a little bit more right here, here, here. Just a little bit more, my brothers and sisters, right here on the Middle East. Now, you could go through a deeper research of it, but we're going to get to the etymology, right? There we go right there. Etymology, Middle East, online etymology dictionary. It's a noun, Middle East. Here, according to the etymology, that means looking at the recorded writing that can be referenced from 1899. So some allege it may have been 1850, right? But here, looking at written documentation, right, point of reference etymologically is 1899. Notice what it says right here. Never defined in a generally accepted way. So this is like a political three-card monte, right, that involves Africa, right, Arabia, right, Africa and Arabia and the East, Right? And also involves from a, a world history, biblical, ancient history, when we talk about ancient Egypt, right? what's called ancient Egypt, when we speak about the Levant, the biblical heritage, Israel, all of that, also to bring Ethiopia in the equation, you can see the confusion that is caused by this terminology, by this false terminology, right? Middle East. The Middle East is fake, right? It's never been defined in a generally accepted way. So you got some people that say, well, the Middle East is everywhere from Arabia to India. Others say, well, the Middle East is just Egypt off of the African continent and Arabia, right? And maybe, you know, Afghanistan and Turkey and well, 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 how, is, how is that? All right, so you get all these different views, and perhaps that's also what's behind these wars and rumors of wars. Think about it for a moment. The Middle East is said to be a tinderbox, right, of conflict. How have these conflicts come about, right? One direct answer is because of this terminology, Middle East, because it doesn't really have a um, accepted definition. There's no accepted definition. So if you say the Middle East is this, right? And if I say it's that, and we both are in the Middle East, we're going to be fighting over something. We're going to be fighting over something. Why? Now, what's worse than all of that is suppose some outsider, some outsider imposes this terminology onto you and onto me, right, for their benefit. This is what we have in this term, Middle East. Middle East is fake and it's dangerous, right? It's dangerous, right? I'm not just talking about the, the people or whatnot like that. I'm talking about this terminology. Why? Because it's never defined in a generally accepted way. If we say Africa today, though it's not an ancient terminology, but it is a modern accepted terminology, we have an idea of what we're speaking about. That means based on the so-called Middle East pseudo terminology, if we say, okay, Egypt is a part of the Middle East, that means when we look at a map of Africa, do we cut out Egypt? Even though it's a part of the continent, do we cut it out because of this modern terminology? You see the confusion. Early use with reference to British India. Uh-oh, wait. The early use that is found, written and documented, is with reference to British India. Now, we showed you a map just a couple of moments ago. You can look up a map. Hopefully one's, you know, do we have a map with, let me show some maps, but it, those maps didn't have um, names on it, right? If we show you where British India is, right, or was rather, and, and show you what they call the Middle East today, you can see the confusion. These are two different regions. Later, later, 
often of everything between Egypt and Iran. So how did this terminology for Middle East change from reference to early use to British India to later on referring to everything? Notice it says everything between Egypt and Iran. You mean Egypt and Iran going to the northern part? So that doesn't include the southern part? What is this terminology based on? What is it based on? Is it based on direction? Is it based on like, you know, like, you know, um, um, geography, you know, like to say that, that, um, you know, like Africa, we can see Africa on a map, you know, we can just look at the borders. Even if we don't include um, Arabia, we can still look at the borders and see, well, within these borders of the continent, the territory known as Egypt is a part of that. So it's a political thing. It's politics then. Right? Whose politics or whose politics? This is what we say, not just politics. Right? Politics is bad enough, but this is politics. Middle East, this terminology is politics, right? At its height or at its worst depth. Because first it referred to British India, then later on to everything between Egypt and Iran. Hence, note this right here. Hence, from all of this, we get now the terminology Middle Eastern. So what kind of lie them I tell when them say Jesus Christ was Middle Eastern, when they say the ancient Egyptians were Middle Eastern? This terminology, Middle Eastern, was just coined and came into vogue circa 1903. Why? Right? 1903. Think about it for a moment. 1903, right? So Jesus Christ, they say 1 AD. So that means we have 1902 to three years earlier. They knew nothing of this term. And this terminology does not appear in any ancient writings, right? So Yeshua called Jesus was not Middle Eastern, right? Because a pseudonym. My right? is gnosis pseudonymos. It's a pseudonym. Right? The ancient Egyptians were not Middle Eastern. The Egyptians were not Middle Eastern people. Now I know this is right here, Middle East, right? The frequency of its use. Notice something right here. This is a good map, a little map um graph. This is a good graph right here. You can see the frequency of its use. Right? Right, it's very little to no use, very small usage, right, from like 1800 until we get to roughly about 1920 to the Roaring Twenties. And then we see it go up a little bit, right, to roughly around 30, 1930 something. But then you can see right where we have 1940, this is approximate time leading up to World War II, you can see on the graph where it begins to shoot up. It begins to ascend. You can see right there, it begins to ascend up, right, from the 40s. From just before the 40s, that was the invasion, fascist invasion of Ethiopia, the King of Kings. We got, you know, what's going on right there, conquering line of the tribe of Judah. He goes to the League of Nations, right, to the nations, the Gentiles, and he warns them the match was struck in Ethiopia, but the flames will burn Europe. They laughed him, right, you know, they mocked and scoffed him. But then what happened five years later? And then we get the world war comes on the scene. Europe burns and blazes and then the world war. That's roughly what you can see on this particular graph right there. From 1940, from just before 1940, and through the 40s, you can see through, look how much it begins to ascend, all right? And notice right there around 1945, 40, well, 50, but that's roughly about 1950, it kind of tapers off a little bit. Why? Because that's the post-war time. What do we say? What do we tell you? And what does the evidence prove? Evidence proves that this term Middle East and Middle Eastern was popularized, especially during World War II, right, by news reporters, right, by the media, by the fourth estate, as it's called, 
right? It tapers off a little bit. Now notice in the 60s, right? It seems to even decrease a little bit after the 60s. Then we get the warfare, state of Israel, other wars going on over there in that particular region, conflicts. And what happens roughly as we get to like the 70s, it actually dips. It seems to dip before the 70s, right? It actually dips off. Notice that, a powerful little, little something there, right? And then it just shoots up. Look at that. It just shoots up. Look how it shoots up to the 80s. Now, if you know the politics of what was the politics that was going on, it, it makes a lot of sense because this is showing the frequency, right? The frequency of its usage, right? Now, as we come forward to say um, 19, uh, 2019, you know, it, it, it begins to slide down. It begins to fall down because it's a certain consciousness and ones, you know, recognize Middle East. What's the Middle East? You know, you know, Middle West, Middle South, right? But then it, it dips down right there. But it still is a terminology that is still greatly being used, right? It needs to be buried. This particular terminology of Middle East, right? Right? You know, needs to be buried. So we, we can see it right over here. Yeah, there we go. Middle East. Right, needs to be buried. Right, this terminal. Let's get a screenshot of this right here. Right, it's an interesting little graph right there on the Middle East. Then they, this is a, a subsequent term that goes along with it Middle East and Mid East. Let's look at this one right here Mid East. Bring up Mid East. Mid East is basically a shorter, abbreviated way, truncated somewhat of saying. Middle East, attested from 1944. Notice this, from what? 1944, Mid East. It's attested, that means we have evidence of it, in reference to Western Asia. Hmm, Western Asia. Pray tell, where's Western Asia? Mid East, loosely, <laughs> that word needs to be underlined, highlighted, loosely. Loosely defined, right? It's loosely, it has a very loose definition. Very loose. This is why ones will say, well, no, Jesus was not a white man, but he was like Middle Eastern. Lie, 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 lie. Right? Middle Eastern, the terminology did not even, you know, exist. So this is this is the most right here. You know, it's little, but it's talawa. Right? It's a small thing, but there's a great meaning in this right here. You know, if ones can, you know, see and receive the truth for themselves. So, brothers and sisters, get on this story here about um, the fight against what they call Afrocentricity. Right? Because we, too, were so Eurocentric, you know, orientated even as black people because of the of the system of things, right? Until we started to look for knowledge and truth for ourselves, and then we begin to find ourselves, even in ancient Egypt, right? Get to find ourselves in the Bible, right? And that particular land where we have ancient Egypt, where we have the Israelites, are you not as the children of the Ethiopians? And Ethiopia, interestingly enough, is the same regions. Notice all of these things all kind of connect here, right? All connect, right? So for, you know, the Israelites and even for those serious uh, comedicists, you know, amongst our people, this is a rallying point, right? You know, to get that awareness that the term Middle East is a total fake fake terminology, right, which we should not, you know, um, be endorsing, right, here's another way of calling it right here, so on the modern Middle East, right, they basically disclude India, or at least India probably has discluded herself from that right there, um, this is where it gets tricky because it's loosely defined, right, see what they do with Sudan? They cut Sudan, notice what they did right here, they cut Sudan in half, right? So it seems as though they connect Middle East with some Arabo-Islamicism, right? Arabo-Islamicism, 
as they best should, should call it the, you know, Arabic East or the Mohammedan East or something like that. But what's so interesting about this particular map is that a lot of these peoples in these regions, right, when we look at 2,000 plus years ago, these people were not in these particular regions. These people have, like the Americans, they share a lot with the Americans and the British, that they have gone to other regions, conquered other regions, and built up their own civilization, and even have incorporated many of the ways and cultures of the people, you know, as their own. This is where the big, you know, the big fight, you know, with um, over ancient Egypt artifacts is presently, but it's still heating up. And we give thanks to ones like Jada Pinkett, you know, Jada Pinkett Smith, yeah. Jada Pinkett with what she did on the Cleopatra that has stirred a, a, a fireball, a firestorm of controversy, and it's waking people up. Hopefully ones get more on this Dutch museum being expelled by the Egyptian authorities under the so-called accusation of quote falsified history but what it is is when people start to be afrocentric it becomes a problem right not even so much to the white europeans but to the zahi hawasses and to many of these peoples who have even many of these people in the regions like egypt you know a lot of the modern egyptians they have been made to believe a lot by ones like zahi hawass and yes they need to recall his degree you know, revoke or recall his degree. And you need to join that petition. Check out that petition. I think it's on change.org for Zahi Hawass to get his petition, you know, a um, petition for his degree, his degree, his degree to be recalled. I think he has a degree from the University of Pennsylvania or something like that. Was hearing ones like um, Brother Reggie, you know, um, Jabari uh, on the Sardinetta platform. This there, we definitely agree. And yes, brothers and sisters, those of you who know, yes, we did make that suggestion when there was on on Brother Reggie's platform. Once was like, what what should we do, right? And we said, you know, a petition, you know, change.org, one of these platforms like that. It's a good thing. Even we did some videos with the Kevin Hart. You can probably see it on the Rastafari Jews channel, you know, because we said that these ones were awfully silent. You know, House of Consciousness, Jabari, Brother Reggie, on it. You know, perhaps they were taking care of other things, but it's happy to see that they even have begun to address these particular matters and join that petition. We need to get that circulated around, you know? You know, this is something that we all can agree on. This is also a very interesting map here. Notice how they take out little sections up at, at the north, and then they have... A little section of the Horn of Africa. So that little part, the part that's in the green, that's part of the Middle East too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But not this area over here. This is not the Middle East. You know? So it's not region. It's not really a region or land mass. Right? It all has to do, you see right there? When we look at languages. The Turkish, the Ottoman Turks. You know? They were in the Mohammedan thing. The Arabic people. Also, the Mohammedan thing, you see a little bit of the Hebrew right there, the state of Israel, they're all focused against that while they have all this other land. Why don't they do something to the desert? Kurd, Kurdish, you know, then uh, you know, all these other stands right there, so forth and so on. But notice what it leaves out. You see what it leaves out right there? You know, basically, they've given a name to the region, right? You know, Middle East, you could say the Middle Invasion. We need to call it the Middle Invaders. You know, the Middle Invaders, basically, instead of the Middle East. You know, common languages. We see Arabic, Persian. And this is really, well, this is all part of what the Bible talks about with the Canaanites. I just want to put that on the table right there. With a lot of what the Bible talks about the Canaanites. You know, but there's some more on this if we start to approach this from a um, the Ottoman Turks, right? You, you definitely need to look into the Ottoman Turks. This is how this region gets to be. You know, this is looking at earlier history to see how things evolve over time. You know, Ottoman Empire. If you don't know about it, definitely get to know about it and its effects on ancient kingdoms. You know, the Judeo-Christian kingdom as well, affected by these things. But it's the British, right? It's basically the British, 
the British have a strong political influence and the daughter of Babylon, you know, America has picked up on what their mama has done, you know, in that particular region, why America is so invested, right? Because it's a mother and daughter project, Britain and her daughter, you know, um, we could say America, at least the, the people, right? You know, they're part of the same thing, right? It's similar to what we see in the other parts of the world, right? Now that's going a little bit too far back right there, but you know, history repeats itself. Just showing some of this right here to show that history basically repeats itself, all right? If you know history, if you know who's who, you, we can see how history repeats itself, the collapse of the Egyptian empire, the different invaders that came in, especially with the Greeks, you know, Greek Alexander the Great, you know, will take over a week in Egypt, and eventually Rome took over, and then we get the um, latter-day um, Arabs, the Ottoman Turks and others coming after them, you know, but looking at history, history does repeat, right, itself, yes, so right here, the Middle East, the Middle East is fake, don't believe the hype.